this is Donnie Jackson, editor of IWCE Surgery Communications, and today I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada at APCO 2018, and I'm in the Ann Ritsu booth speaking with Jeremy Davis. Jeremy, thanks for taking the time to speak with us. Hi, Donnie. Yes, thanks for taking the time to speak with us as well. So, tell indoor coverage, indoor mapping, all these things are problems. How's Ann Ritsu helping solve them? Yes, correct. So, the biggest issue when, when dealing with the indoor coverage mapping is the lack of access to GPS. It makes it very difficult to make the measurements. Um, and there's also the, the method that we had before the TRX product was all done manually. So what we did is we worked with a third-party company called TRX to develop an indoor solution that not only doesn't require GPS, but is also fully automated and will create actually 3D reports from, from the measurements. And how it works is our analyzers can either make channel power measurements via spectrum analyzer, or we can demodulate a P25 or LTE signal. So we set the analyzer up to measure your signal. The analyzer will then connect to an Android device as well as a the tracking device. This tracking device does have GPS, but it's also a gyroscope, altimeter, and a compass. So it does not require access to GPS while making the measurement. And what'll happen is if you look at the TV right now, the technician would clip this device under their belt, they would create maps with their floor plans, they would calibrate the device to their, their uh, walking pace, and then they would just walk, and this would all be done automated in the background. You would just walk through the, the building, however many floors, uh, parking garages, stairways, elevators, doesn't matter, and you'll be able to get your indoor coverage mapping for, like I said, channel power measures, or we can demodulate P25 as well as the LTE signals as well. And so who uses this? So the big driver of it are, is uh, there's a, basically a fire code out there that requires a complete indoor coverage mapping uh, for these measurements. So anybody doing radio, public safety, uh, new buildings, I mean, I believe that the, the, the code of occupancy or whatever doesn't even get issued until this can, can be measured. So, so big heavy, you know, heavy public safety because they need to make sure that when their you know, fire guys and their policemen are in a building and they need to call for help, that they actually can get a signal. All right. And, you know, traditionally that's always been, hey, I need to know whether or not I have signal for my LMR system from public safety. And now with FirstNet and things like that, are you seeing um, cities say, hey, you got to be able to show that you've got coverage for Band 14 and, and FirstNet for sure. as well? For absolutely, yeah. So, so just right with the FirstNet, we see two major jumps. You know, one with our PIM analysis for the installations, two for the indoor coverage mapping. And, you know, like I said, the, the First that, you know, that's that's your safety, you know, uh, communications line. You know, so it's not best effort when you call 911. It's absolutely this this call needs to be connected for sure. Yeah. Okay, and so um, and with the PIM analysis, uh, passive intermodulation, what what does that measure actually, and, and that sort of thing in terms so of it's, what it's, you see? So PIM's it actually it's a type of interference. Right. So what will happen is when the network gets turned up, it'll start interfering, and the PIM can either create issues for the first net, or in most cases, it's creating interference for other providers like T you know uh, AT&T, Verizon. So it's very important because as soon as that goes live and gets the priority, it's going to affect the other bands unless we go out and mitigate the pin. The pin comes from, from rusty metal, connectors, all types of things where um, when you're you know, installing in an outdoor environment like a rooftop or something, there could be a, a lot of potential instances for that pin. Okay. And in terms of, uh, you know, if, I, if I'm a fire, fire code um, inspector or something like that, uh, or I'm just a building trying to get ready for it so that I can right. get that, um, can I do with one walk measure both or do I need to do one walk for LMR and then another one for uh, um, the first so it's, net probably? It's, it would be one walk for each just because of uh, the, the frequency you set to for the analyzer. Right. So if you had strong legs and wanted to carry two analyzers, you could call <laughs> the frequency, you know. But yeah, we, we do have the ability to, to, to scan channels, but the time that it takes to do multiple ones means you have to walk so slow that you're probably just better off doing you know, each doing frequency two. with the one walk for sure. Yeah. Very cool. Well, Jeremy, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us and have a great rest of the show. Thanks for talking with us.